911, what's the nature of your emergency? Welcome back to the Talk to the Living podcast. I'm your host, Ashley Walton, joined by Detective Walton. Clint, how are you? I'm good. You had went over to our neighbor's house yesterday, and when you came home, something that was notable was that they didn't have any dogs. And I thought that was so strange because to me, I can't imagine my home not having a dog. And, you know, to each their own, some people are allergic or maybe they don't like it, or maybe they had dogs and, you know, they're done with them or or whatever it may be. But it got me thinking about just how important our dogs are in our life. We have a, a Pomsky, her name is Bureau, and I'm absolutely obsessed with her. And we were watching a documentary on Salem Now. It's called Capital Punishment. I recommend everybody watch it. I'll link it down below. Basically, they were talking about everything that happened during January 6th, all of the things that we didn't see. And throughout this documentary, Ashley Babbitt, the the veteran who was murdered by a Capitol Police officer, he is giving his his recount of the the incident that um, took place, and he's giving it from his point of view. And one thing that it it, it breaks it's so so bittersweet the story, but he's talking about how Ashley had a dog for seven years, a seven year old German Shepherd. And he was talking about how that was her baby. And they show pictures of her with the dog. And you could just see the love and the bond that the two of them shared. And he said that after she had passed away, he started to notice when she didn't come home that her dog just became very depressed. And I've read articles and stories of, of that happening where dogs, you know, they're they're wondering where their their person is, their best friend is. And he said that in February... So the month after she was murdered, he spread her ashes. And three days after that, her dog died, a seven-year-old, otherwise healthy German shepherd. And he thinks that her dog died of a broken heart. And you're tearing up, Clint. (laughs) It's it's very, very sad. And I'm sharing this story because I think that not all of us recognize or realize just how important we are to our pets. And... I also recently read an article from a veterinarian who was talking about how when we have to make the very difficult decision of putting our dogs down, how some owners opt to not be in the room when that happens and how in the final moments of a dog's life, all they're doing is they're searching for where where you are. And that is their their last memory. That is the last thing that they have when when they go to sleep. And I, I also think it's important for us to recognize that no matter how hard that is, it is also our responsibility to be there for our pets in that final moment, if ever we find ourselves in it. Yeah, that's it's it's one of those things. No matter how hard it is for you to have to witness that, to deal with that, it's I mean, it's the last breath that your animal's gonna take. Like would you do that to your family member? Like, would you do that to someone else? Like, I don't know. To me, like, you need to be there. Like, you need to be that support for them to let them know, like, you're still there to the very end. Yeah. And as first responders, I think that the concept of loyalty and sacrifice and basically this unwavering companionship, it really resonates on both a professional and a personal level. Clint, I've never asked you this before, but what is your experience in having the pets that we do as it relates to um, just the the health benefits of having a pet based on the work that you do? You know, it's it's something that it, you, you come home from work and, and you, there's an excitement from your, your pets, from your animals. I mean, of course, from your family too, but when it's your pets, like they literally try knocking you down. They're so excited to see you when you come home. And it gives you such a sense of purpose when you're, you're there and, and they're so ecstatic to see you and spend time with you now. And it could be 20 minutes later, they could be off doing their own thing and it's not a big deal anymore, but it's that the momentary just, 
expression of joy and happiness that they have, it it's impossible for you not to feel that for yourself when they're doing that. And I think it's something it's so important to have. And it's such a special gift that I think we often take for granted because they are always there until they're not. And I think that um, many of us know what that that feeling is of not having them anymore. And, you know, we were recording some episodes and we just went downstairs. And even the the time, maybe an hour in between us being up here and then going downstairs, they were excited like we had just come home. We have a Pomsky and she was, we call it rooing. It's like howling, only it's with an R when she does it. And it, it, it's the funniest thing. And so she started to roo. And we have Beretta. She's a Pomeranian. And she was, we call her a Teletubby. So she was just kind of <laughs> wiggling around, excited. And then my my little beau, he, um, he was just rubbing his face on his bed and wagging his tail, looking up at me with these doe eyes, just wanting attention. And so it, it's the sweetest thing to realize that, you know, I, I know not being a parent, um, people will always say like, you will never understand the love that you can have for a child because you don't have kids, which I strongly disagree with because I am a child of a parent and I 100% understand that love. And I think it's very similar to that because our pets, re- they rely on us in the same way that a child would. We have to take care of them. We have to feed them. We have to bathe them, clean up after them and um, just support them in, in their life. And I think that it is such a, a special gift to these animals that we we're allowed to build and bond in that relationship with. And when it comes to no matter what any of us do for work, I think the therapeutic benefits of having a pet, they, they're monumental. We are fortunate enough to have a patrol horse too. And it's very much the same to be said with her, right? Whether I'm going out there just to say hi to her or to feed her and she comes up and, you know, she muzzles me. Mm-hmm. Um, and she just, she's, she's so good and so special. And you can have these silent conversations and these calm moments with your pet. And you don't realize how calming in, in terms of a energetic level that that is. Yeah. It's, it's not just dogs. It's not just horses. Like so many different animals have their own responses and and their own kind of healing benefits that they provide to you is it's, I mean, what, there's a scientifically proven thing. If you're sitting down and petting a dog or petting a cat, like it's proven that your blood pressure lowers and you become more in a relaxed state and in a relieved stress on a whole different level. Like you, you don't recognize it necessarily and you, we do take advantage of it, but it's, it's so important to have. That's why so many places, like you go to an airport, they have support animals, like just to pet the dog that's there, like, cause it helps ease the discomfort of people who are scared of flying. And, and it's so special. I'm thinking about being out and about, and then you see somebody with their dog and maybe it's not, not exactly the place you would have expected to see a dog. It's always unexpected when you see, I think somebody's, somebody's pet and you can't help but smile and to be happy. And then you know, living in California though, there's this awkward situation that exists where like your first instinct is to go and pet the dog, but some people are so callous and rude. They don't want anybody touching their dog, which I understand. But I think you, you also need to understand if you're taking your dog out into the public, that's probably something that could happen. Um, but it, it's such a great joy. And I think that we need to realize the, the reasons why these pets are placed into our lives and to just do as much as we can to be appreciative of that and to not take it for granted. Yeah, I think with anything, you know, you get so accustomed to it. We do take it for granted. And, and it's taking that moment to give them that attention, to show them your love. And, and because they have nothing else in life but to give you theirs. And it's so important to have that. It's funny, as we're speaking on this, we're upstairs in the studio and we live on a mountain. And so I can see down below where our neighbor is. She actually has a a rescue. She has horses and um, I'm watching because she has a donkey named Pete. And Pete was walking the horse. The horse was just following the donkey. It was the, the most adorable thing. But 
um, again, it's just a, a special thing for us to have available and then to nurture and cherish in our lives when, when we do have it. I hope you've gotten some value out of today's episode. If you have, do us a favor, drop a review, subscribe down below. And as always, know that I'm sending you a long, tight hug from my home to yours.